Let's go back to last year, if you remember. And we're talking about two teams, well, three with two losses, right? Possibly getting into the college football playoff, LSU, Alabama, and Tennessee that were knocking on the door, Caleb. Talk about three, right? Am I remembering correctly? Actually, I you until LSU, Texas AM, you had four. Because LSU was nine and two before that last regular season loss to Texas AM. And had they beaten Texas AM and beaten Georgia in the SEC title game, which they weren't going to do. But there there was talk of them maybe getting into the playoff too. Okay. Now we're talking about a one loss SEC team not making the college football playoff, which is a possibility. Portions of the program brought to you by Harold Group Security Solutions, HaroldGRP.com. Leadership experience specialization, addressing problems through unique mission specific mitigation techniques. And I'm telling you what, th that group is highly trained. They will keep your children safer. We're working with public, private schools now looking to work with public schools sooner. So tell your school administrator about Harold Group Security Solutions. We want to avoid the tragedies that have been a part of our country for way too long, Harold Group Security Solutions. So let's take a look at the SEC standings right now. So Georgia's your one team in, correct? Yes, but okay. I'm, it, I'm going beyond. This isn't about two SEC teams or one loss. I'm saying if there's a, if, if there's a one loss SEC championship champion, would that team get excluded, even winning the SEC? Well, that's an absolute no. So if Georgia sure? lost to, if Georgia lost to Tennessee and still won the SEC title, they're getting in. How do you explain if Georgia lost to Tennessee, a team that lost to Florida that's really, really, really bad? Well, I don't want to get into the specifics of comparative scores, but if Georgia lost to whomever and they won the SEC, I think they're going to get in. Okay, so this goes down to if somebody knocks off Georgia and wins the SEC with one loss, put it that way. So they would knock off. Okay. Could this be a year where the SEC is all out excluded from the college football playoff, which has never happened? No, I don't think so. I think they have too much power. And I think this is where the 12-team playoff will eliminate some of these politics, which may not be good for the SEC, but will be good as a whole because you're going to see two or three teams make it each and every year, maybe even four in some years. But if you win the SEC, which you and I would agree is year to year the best conference, maybe not this year, I don't see any way that Georgia would be left out. Okay. You, so with one, with one loss, what happens if Georgia has one loss? Um, USC, Oregon, and Washington are all undefeated right now. And one of them wins the Pac 12, and one of them when it finishes 11 and one and loses 12 and one and loses the Pac 12 title game. And Miami, Ohio State, and Mich and I'm sorry, not Miami, Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan all have like a round robin where they all have one loss, but to nobody else. And then you have Florida State going undefeated in the ACC. Florida State going undefeated in the ACC, I think, is a scary one, the one that throws <clears throat> a wrench in this whole thing. So right now, I'm looking at Georgia, the winner of the Michigan-Ohio State game. And I'm just doing this according to the AP poll. I don't think this is where it's going to be. I'm just kind of breaking it down. So Florida State is fourth and has an opportunity to go undefeated. They've got, oh, Syracuse this weekend. That should be difficult. And then Oklahoma is fifth. So let's say Georgia loses a game. Could the Michigan-Ohio State winner, that would be one, <clears throat> Florida State, make it in that would be two oklahoma goes undefeated that would be three and then i think the question you would have because i am going to insert a little of my opinion in this i don't think penn state's going to run the table then the question you would have would you take a one loss georgia team or would you take a one loss michigan ohio state loser that let's say lost by a point dave you've left out a crucial detail let me let me let me hear it. The Pac-12. That could be the fourth team, the Pac-12 champion. No, I, to I totally agree. And I'm not so that's I'm it. Not We're talking about Oklahoma, the no. Pac-12 champion, Florida State and Michigan or Ohio State the winner of that game. Yeah, I, I no, I'm not disagreeing with and I didn't I, I didn't leave them out on purpose, but I omitted them just looking at the AP ranking. Okay. Like comparing the one loss like team that just one loss teams. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so no, the the Pac-12 yeah, I mean, that definitely. So maybe even the 
the more likely scenario, Pac-12 winner, um, I'm excluding Georgia for the sake of the argument, uh, Pac-12 winner, Michigan, Ohio State winner, Florida State winner, and then Oklahoma winner? Yeah, or, that could I'm happen. Sorry, oh, and, uh, sorry, Florida State and, and Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. That's a real possibility. I mean, I could see I, that happening. It could be Oklahoma, Florida State, Michigan, Ohio State winner, and then Pac-12 winner. And another – the the reason I'm bringing this up is look at all the ways even one-loss teams from other conferences could get in over one-loss teams from the SEC this year. What happens if Alabama runs the table, Dave? Georgia goes undefeated. Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC title game, right? Okay. What if Texas – gets revenge on Oklahoma in the Big 12 title game because you know they're going to play again. So Texas then is the Big 12 champion at 12-1 and one with one loss. Alabama is the SEC champion at 12-1 and one with one loss. Texas beat Alabama. In that moment, you have to put Texas in over Alabama, right? Um, yeah, and, and imagine for a moment being in that committee and having to leave out an SEC team. They're not supposed to have any pressure from television, but they're going to have some pressure from television, right? I mean, you don't want to leave out the SEC. You absolutely can't afford to. It's, um, I mean, people don't want to admit this, but particularly if USC and USC is not going undefeated, but a school like USC, I'm sorry, USC football is not a brand. They don't care about them in Los Angeles. It's like my, it's a brand the same way Miami is a brand, which means it's not a brand. The, the committee would much rather have a one loss Alabama, one loss Georgia, or a one loss Tennessee and over an undefeated USC. And they'll find every reason in the book to try to do that because USC is not, it, they don't draw eyeballs. They don't. Let, let me argue this. The, and Elias on the message board made reference to this. The SEC uh, being terrible is a narrative. There's some truth to that because there are more Walter Nolans who Tennessee will face this year in the SEC than any other conference. However, there are not as many great quarterbacks as other conferences will offer up. So I think they get some more pub, these other teams, because they have good quarterback play and the SEC is down. We can agree to that. How down? That's tough to say. If they're usually an A plus, are they an A minus or B or a C plus? That's debatable. But I do think the fact that uh, the SEC still has the best big guys, the war daddies, as I've been made fun of for calling them. I still think that's going to that should that should play into any decision making process, but it probably won't. Yes, this it's one of the put it this way. This year is a year where the SEC team, if it's one loss and the SEC and a Pac-12 team has one loss. This is just that one type of year where you don't automatically go with the Pac-12 team but you don't choose the SEC team just by the fact that they were in the SEC. You actually have to break down their resume overall, don't you? This is the one year you have to do that. You have you have to break down – if it's two teams that are very close with similar records, you can't just say, oh, they're in the SEC, they go. You actually have to look at their overall resume. Whereas typically, I think, if it comes to that, you say, oh, they were in the SEC, they get to go because they played um, more uh, th This, according to the message board, <clears throat> Travis says USC loses on Saturday. They're no, they don't. I can tell you guys right now that won't happen. Their defense is horrible. I think they'll lose eventually. I don't think they're going to be one of the undefeated teams that we're going to be talking about. But if you pick four teams, you're on the college football playoff committee and you pick four teams right now, the season stopped tomorrow because COVID-2 hit us and you got to get a college football playoff in, who would it be? If I had to pick right now, I think you've got to go Florida State, Oklahoma, Ohio State, and I'll go Georgia. I'm not putting Michigan in right now. They haven't played anybody. And I talked about that on Monday. You actually have to play. Now, if you're now, if who do you think I will think will get there? I would probably go Michigan and Georgia as the top two, but this is just right now. And I'm, and, and so, I mean, Dave, what do you do? What, I mean, this is an honest question. Florida state goes undefeated. The PAC 12 champion goes undefeated. The Michigan or Ohio state goes undefeated wins the big 10. I mean, this is the most likely way it plays out. Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC title game and Texas beats Oklahoma. And it's a one-loss Big 12 team or a one-loss SEC team. At that point, are you, are you going with Texas too and just saying, sorry, SEC tough break. Nobody from your league goes. Or are you going to knock out one of the undefeated teams? I'm going to go eye test for a second. I would have Michigan, Georgia. It pains me to say this, to be real honest with you, but... Um, 
I, I would go. It doesn't pay me to say Oklahoma. I would go Oklahoma and Florida State. Those are the four teams that I, I think are the best. And I understand what you're saying about Michigan hasn't played anybody. So my eye test could be blown away once they play Ohio State. We saw that happen in reverse last year. But just eye test when I watch them, those are the ones that I, I think are the, the four best teams. When is the first college football playoff selection show, by the first, way? First played. week of November, which is first a good time to November. do it. Yeah, which this is the problem. <laughs> And this, I had, I had my problem with this with the BCS too. Although the BCS did take resume into account because they factored in losses, strength of schedule, things like that. I have a problem with this committee because they're told you pick the four best teams with preferential treatment to conference champions based on eye test. Well, then you open the door for things you shouldn't open the door for because I think they don't you and I don't you agree? Yes, eye test can be a tiebreaker, but resume should be number one, right? Your actual body of work should be the most important thing. What you've done on the field. Yeah, that should be the biggest thing, what you've done on the field. It shouldn't really matter how your preseason or anything else, but is that going to be what the Vegas case? would favor? Like last year, I, I would have favored Alabama over everybody but Georgia. That doesn't mean they belonged in the college football playoff. They didn't do what they needed to do on the field to get there. Like actually winning the games matters. <laughs> 